All right, let me give you the TLDR right up front. I don't think that MuseScore is a professional grade score writer yet. It might get there in time and it might have all the people who signed up for it because it was free and it was the most economical option that they get to the point where they require a professional score writer right at the time that MuseScore delivers those features. Uh, but right now, I don't think it's there. And I could say that with some confidence because I've spent a decade creating professional scores in Sibelius, uh, and I've used Dorico, I've used Finale, I have certain expectations for what a score writer could do, and I don't think MuseScore is there yet. But if I were those other three, I would be real worried because for free, it was pretty impressive. And I don't want to make this um, just a giant gripe fest, and I want to have a full disclosure up front. I know some people on the Sibelius team. This is not me being like, you should never use MuseScore because it's not good enough. Um, I think it's a great place to start if you've got nothing. Um, and uh, actually, let me start with, let me show you something that I think MuseScore almost does better than Sibelius, but then they fumble the ball. Uh, almost immediately. Okay, so let's go over here to Sibelius and you can see the thing I'm talking about. Here is a um, some drums on the staff. And if I, do, oops, if I type that F, it gives me that kick drum. And then when I hit C, it does the middle C, which is nothing on, a, on drums. I have to go up the octave to get the snare drum, which is the thing that I want. Kick, snare, kick, snare. So now when I hit F again, now it's got... Above that, an octave, this would make perfect sense if we were writing a melodic part because it has to make some guess about what it what you intend to do. This, for me, is a giant miss that I have to do that every time. Let me show you how MuseScore handles this, and I think this is actually pretty cool. Okay, so it knows that uh, right away that when I type this G, you can see down here on the bottom, it's got this edit drum set over here and it shows you all the things that are defined in here. When I type these Gs, it knows that this should be in voice one because that's the hi-hat that's in there. And if I go back in here and I sort of click on B1 and then I type this, let me uh, do that again with appropriate duration. Oops. It knows that I want those things to be in voice two. And the way that I got there is you could click on edit drum set over here in the lower left. It'll pop this thing open. And you can see that each of these things I can define that I want the closed hi-hat right here to be on the space above the top line. I want it to be default voice one. And I want the shortcut to be G. I want the stem direction to be up. If you can contrast that with the bass drum, I've got it down here um, in the bottom space. It's in default voice two, it's got the stem direction down. This is actually a big improvement and it's really cool. Here's where they fumble the ball and it drives me crazy. One, I started with their defaults and I started customizing this. Their defaults, they're saying, hey, um, you know that drums are not like regular melodic instruments and that these spaces and lines don't correspond with pitches. And rather than just use what we've already come to expect, where the bottom space is an F and the middle line is a B, no, they just threw all that out and they said, well, why don't we just make B, B for bass drum, and A, B for snare drum, and on and on they go. Which, okay, I could learn almost any key command. That's, I could make this work. Then they say, okay, but still you only get to have those seven letters from A to G as your shortcuts. So now when I want something that's not one of these things, if I want this floor tom or this open hi-hat right here, I have to like manually drag this thing onto here or do this and then it's, I don't even remember how to do it. It's so dumb. It's so complicated. Why not, since I want this to be like my open hi-hat, how about shift G instead of G? I don't know. I'm just saying you could have something other than those seven key commands available to you. I think that's a giant, giant swing and a miss. Um, but I do like the idea that you're predefining what all of these notes are going to be. Uh, the other thing that they do so horribly is they have this open hi-hat that's right here. It has the sound for an open hi-hat, but then you have to manually go through and add. Okay, I've clicked on this note. Now I've gone over to properties, or I'm sorry, I've gone over to palettes. Let me move my face over here. And I found articulations, and I've clicked on this thing that stands for open. Does this automatically make this sound like an open hi-hat? 
No, it sure doesn't. Uh, it's why, 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 why does everything take an extra set of clicks? This is why I think this is not, not all that happening. What else do I have in here? I got my notes down here. Let me look at this. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay. So let's go back to this. Um, let's look at instruments. I'm going to hide these drums and show this guitar. Here's something else that drives me crazy. Here I've got some notes that I inputted here. You can see right here where this is playing. It's a two-measure repeat. It's everything that you had right here. So if I were to highlight this right here and I clicked the R key, it repeats what is written above, except for it will not repeat this two measure repeat even though I want it. And it doesn't do it either if I do this with, here's Command C, Command V. Nope, it just will not copy paste this right here. That's so maddening. Like, can you please, please make something efficient? I'm in a hurry. Uh, let's see, what else do we got in here? Oh yeah, I can't move multi-selected items. So let me show you this. I'm gonna go into style and I'm going to take the measure numbers. I want it to be at an interval of every measure. I want it to be below on the left and I want it to be minus 0.75. Hello, what's it, why is it not working? Okay, okay, so now I have all of these in here and let's say I didn't have those as 0.75. Let's say I had these two and they were running into the notation or something like that. I can physically grab these with the mouse and move them wherever they need to be. You know what I can't do when I have them multi-selected? I can't use the arrow keys. I can't go up or down or to the side. If it's only one item, sure, I can use these arrow keys to change its location. Can I do that with <laughs> more than one selected? No, you sure can't. It's all got to be the most laborious mousing experience imaginable. Okay, here's something I do dig about this. I'm going to select this one. Um, I'm going to right click it. And when I do select, I'm going to do similar. And now it is, you can see it has highlighted all of these. And now I can uh, go into here with properties. I don't want Edwin. I want this to be um, finale Broadway. That's what I like to have for this. Now, imagine I'm way up here and I type uh, F for finale Broadway. Does it go to the F for Finale Broadway in the drop down? No, it sure doesn't. It just decides that this note, the first note in the score, that I wanted to make that an F note. Does that make sense to you? Because it sure doesn't make sense to me. Let me try this. <laughs> Let me try this thing again. I got this one. Select. Similar. Edwin. Finale Broadway. Don't want it to be. Okay. I've got this. I'm here right? Everything's great. It looks the way I want it to be. I've got these measure numbers. I've got them located where I want, sort of directly below the bar line. I've got them the size that I want them to be. Everything's great, right? I'm going to save this, and I'm going to close it, and now I'm going to reopen this score. Oh, and look, they've gone back to being size 8 Edwin Italic, even though I changed that, except for these two, which somehow managed to stay... Does that make sense to you that they would just ignore your instructions? Because it doesn't make sense to me either. It's absolutely maddening. If you want custom sizes for chord symbols, I like them to be very large. I've got them at 15 points right here. Yeah, I can't get the default to save that way. I have to manually go through, select all the chord symbols, and then make them 15. And if I change a chord symbol, it automatically takes it back down to 10. It's maddening. Everything requires the mouse. Let me see what else I got here on my list here. Um, speaking of those chord symbols, let's say I had one here. Oh, it kind of did it for me. Let's say this is E minor 7 flat 5. I'm just going to make it be a longer chord symbol in here. And notice that when I changed it, oh, it made it 10 points instead of being 15 points. How annoying is that? All the way annoying. Uh, let's say I wanted to go in here and I wanted to delete the flat 5. I actually just want to make this an E minor 7. And so when I click on this, I'm going to double click on it. Where does my cursor land? Is it land right where I moused it? No, it just randomly shows up. Uh, maybe it does. I, yeah, I can't make sense of this. Why not just put the cursor at the end or make it highlight all of the stuff? Oh, look, how lovely. It made this 10 points again because, of course, I didn't I didn't want it to be the size of what it was already. I wanted it to just revert to this 10-point thing that I can't seem to change. Again, maddening. Everything with the mouse all the time. What else do I got on this list here? Um, yeah, okay. 
let's really get into that mousing thing because this is crazy. Let me show you this first. This is actually a really cool way of doing things. This is palettes. Here are all the different um, categories of stuff that you might want to add to your score or alter your score by using. So if I want to um, add dynamics to this note right here, I can either... Um, take this thing and do it this way, or I could grab this thing and I could drop drop it right on a note and it would allow me to add those dynamics. And all of the dynamics are here inside of this palette. And there are more palettes than you have here. If you go to add palettes, you've got stuff like bagpipe embellishments, accordion. I'm not going to use that. I'm not going to use harp, just like the horn arranger is not going to use fretboard diagrams or guitar tab stuff. So that's, that's actually pretty cool. Um, you can add in the things that you want in here. Here's what's not cool about it. I'm going to open up using command comma, the shortcuts menu. And here are all the things that you can make into a shortcut. And there are the things that you would want, like either I want to append a note to a chord. This works the way you want it to work. Everything about this, yeah, this is great. It's got some really, really strange things in here, things that I couldn't even figure out what they did by Googling them. And they are available to be added as a keyboard shortcut. But you know what you can't have as a keyboard shortcut? Any of these things over here. You don't get to have. You can have um, like this right here. You can have as a keyboard shortcut by doing that. Better to see it on a full measure. You can get some of these articulations, the most common ones. You can have these accents and staccatos. You can have those be part of your keyboard shortcuts because they come predefined. Everything else over here is not available to be predefined as or to be defined as a keyboard shortcut, which means this bar line where I add in this two measure or sorry, uh, double bar line right here, I use this constantly and I can't get to it except for by mousing over unfolding this if it's already folded up and then clicking on the button. Same thing, I use this layout one all the time. This little button right here, I say, I wanna have these three measures be on a system. I highlight them and I do this. Can I define that as a keyboard shortcut? No, I cannot. Everything in MuseScore that you wanna do involves using the mouse or the trackpad, which just makes everything take a couple extra clicks, a couple extra seconds. And when you're talking about a score that's got a dozen instruments on it, we're 11 people on stage, 11 people on stage, let's say it's 100 measures long, I'm gonna make all these edits. By the time I get to the end of this thing, I'm an hour longer than I would be using Sibelius. And it's not just that I don't know MuseScore as well, it's that it is physically limiting me what I can do with it. So it is a very nice score writer for $0. It's an unbelievable score writer for $0. But for someone who's used a professional tool before, it is absolutely maddening. Do I have anything else that's in here that is driving me crazy? Oh, this blew my mind. Let's say I've got this thing right here. Remember we tried to repeat this and it wouldn't allow me to do these two measure repeats? Okay, let's say I've got slashes in here, right? So let's say instead of these slashes, I wanna just put what I have right here, this two measure repeat. I'm gonna highlight these. I'm gonna click the two measure repeat. What happens? Nothing. Nothing happens when I click that. Why does it nothing happen? Well, it doesn't tell you, but it's because I still have these slashes occupying these measures and they need to be fully empty before I can put in my two measure repeat. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna hit delete because if you look on the screen right here, it's showing you, it looks like, well, I have these things highlighted and I delete. Did you catch what happened right there? Because it wasn't that I deleted these two measures of slashes, it's that I deleted the shortcut for the two bar repeat from this palette. And now in order to get it back, I have to click on more and add it there. Three clicks, four clicks, five clicks if you include putting it back where it belongs to do something that takes one click to delete on accident because they can't even show you which thing that you have highlighted. Why is it that I can one click delete the double measure repeat from my palettes, but I can't add that two measure repeat to my shortcuts. Does that make sense to you? Because it doesn't make any sense to me. Anyways, these are my gripes with MuseScore. I hope they figure it out. I think more competition is better for everyone, uh, but this, this ain't it.